The government is hot under the collar with the media. This time, it's about the media's decision to, even against advice, provide coverage to what the government said was an illegal activity, the swearing-in ceremony of NASA leader Raila Odinga at Uhuru Park, and the government shot the messenger, pulling the plug on the work of four TV stations, saying they were complicit in the overall plan to overthrow the government. The crackdown, the government says, also extends to individual journalists. We will act decisively but strictly according to the law. As long as those investigations continue, there are certain actions that are going to remain in place. But it's not the first time the government has expressed aggressive hostility towards the media. The commander-in-chief has himself been on the front line in the war with the media. <laughs> Because of the open, democratic, free media, uh, that sense that people from countries like mine feel at home, the sense that people can have open debates in public. And so I would urge the government, as I have done, to allow the media to operate freely, uh, not simply because it's the right thing to do, but because it contributes very strongly to the positive image that Kenya has in the world. In what many now say is becoming institutionalized repression, Human rights organizations say the government's latest actions once again highlight the negligible regard that the government has for alternative voices. They say it is an attempt to put a squeeze on those who speak a language other than that of the state. Which law were police officers following when they switched off? Had they taken the due processes as required in law? Government critics say it is a step back in time, back to the days of a state-controlled media that could be relied on to praise the president and the state in the most turgid prose, careful not to incur the government's wrath. But this latest one also has a precedent. You are not ashamed of yourself. What are you? In August of last year, the government moved to deregister the Africa Center for Open Governance, AFRICOG, and non-profit organizations for allegedly contravening the law in its operations. AFRICOG had in 2013 filed one of two landmark petitions challenging the election of President Uhuru Kenyatta. The NGO's coordination board also deregistered the Kenya Human Rights Commission for alleged tax evasion, operating illegal bank accounts in contravention of the terms and conditions attached to the certificate of registration. The move against the organizations was also seen as one to stop them from filing a suit against President Kenyatta's win in the August general election. The International Development Law Organization, Idea Law, was also targeted for what some government functionaries saw as its contribution to the annulment of the August 8th presidential election by the Supreme Court. Government critics say this latest move against the media and the opposition no doubt eats into the gains made to free the country's democratic space. Shilasendeo, NTV.